to vibrate. And will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers? Thank you. Madam Majority Leader. And good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of April 18th, 2019. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amphrey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Borelli. Brannan. Cabrera. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Present. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Present. Espinal. Here. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Jonai. Grudenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Lander. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Moya. Perkins. Brannon. Here. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Present. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Ballone. Here. Ben Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Cumbo. Present. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. We have a quorum and we will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by the Reverend Dr. William Lupfer of Trinity Church, located at 75 Broadway in Manhattan. Thank you, Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, Speaker Corey Johnson, Public Advocate Jumani Williams, and Council members, especially my friend and Representative Margaret Chin. As you heard, I'm at Trinity Wall Street. We've been part of this neighborhood for over 300 years, and I'm honored to pray us into session. Let us pray. God, our creator, we thank you for bringing us here today in service of the people of your great city. We thank you for this day and for this work. We pray that you will guide our council members and be present in their collective wisdom as they work to make our neighborhoods places of inclusiveness and compassion. Bring them together in a spirit of humility, integrity, and openness as they consider the issues that affect those who live and work in this diverse, ever-evolving city we love and call home. Be with them in their deliberations and decisions. We keep in our hearts all who suffer, those who are homeless, incarcerated, unemployed, sick or hungry, and all who experience any need or want. And we also remember in our prayers those who are seeking to enter our country or our city in search of safety and a better life for themselves and their families. We pray that they encounter compassion in their journey. 
We give thanks for all who work tirelessly for social justice in our city and beyond, particularly those who seek an end to mass incarceration and the racial injustice that fuels it, and those who seek to break the cycle of homelessness. Give them strength to continue their important work and courage and hope to sustain them when they are discouraged. We thank our council members for the gift of their service to their constituents and to one another. May they be faithful representatives of their neighborhoods while serving the good of our entire city. We ask your blessing upon them and upon this meeting that their labor may be fruitful and their decisions wise. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. I'd like to now ask Councilmember Chin to spread the invocation on record. Thank you, Majority Leader. Um, and I welcome uh, Reverend Dr. William Lufford to our city council. Uh, Reverend Dr. William Lufford became- Quiet in the chambers. Reverend Dr. William Lufford became the 18th rector of Trinity Church Wall Street in New York City in 2015. As rector, he focuses on racial justice, mass incarceration, homelessness, and low-income housing, and is an advocate for new ways to help those without adequate voice in society. He regularly engages with the Trinity community, the wider church, other faith, tradition, not-for-profit organization, and leaders in politics and business. Before joining Trinity, uh, Reverend Lofort was the dean of the Trinity Episcopal Cathedral in Oregon, an urban congregation of 1,800 uh, members from the greater Portland area. When he's not working for the church, the Reverend likes to travel with his wife and their two children. Their mission in life is to build bridges across culture, race, and custom. And I wanted to thank uh, Reverend Dr. Lufer for gracing us with his invocation today. And I make a motion that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Chin. And thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lawfer, for that powerful and very calming and peaceful speech. Thank you so much. We will now have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Adams. Madam Majority Leader, I move that the minutes of the stated meeting of March 13th, 2019 be adopted as printed. Thank you, Council Member Adams. And now we will have messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. None. Thank you. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Nice to see you, Madam Majority Leader. I want to thank everyone who is with us on this Thursday. We have a very busy and exciting agenda ahead of us today. Before we begin, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the fire that devastated Notre Dame Cathedral earlier this week in Paris. This is a tragedy for Paris, but it is a tragedy for the entire world, especially at the start of Holy Week. Like many people, I have been to Notre Dame and I loved it, it is breathtaking. And it was heartbreaking and heart sickening to see that fire and the images of it. And I know I speak for all of us at the council when I say we, we extend our deepest sympathies to the people of France who were in mourning. I would also like to remember some of those who have passed in the weeks since our last stated meeting. I am sad to report, very sad to report, that we've lost three construction workers on the job in New York City in one week. Nelson Salinas, who came here from Ecuador and worked in construction to support his family, Gregory Echevarria, a father of four and a veteran who did four tours in Afghanistan. Mm. And Eric Mendoza, who is only 23 years old and leaves behind a five-year-old son in Mexico. 
The women and men of the construction industry in New York City build our city, and their work is extremely important. It is a very dangerous job, and this is a reminder to always keep them in our prayers and to take action here at the council that continues to protect them. I also want to remember NYPD Highway Officer Mark St. Aramond, who lost his life last week. Officer St. Aramond was a 14-year veteran of the NYPD, and he leaves behind his wife Cecilia and their five young children. Wow. Our hearts are with them and the entire NYPD family during this difficult time. And finally, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge Umberto Cruz, the former director of the New York State AIDS Institute, who recently passed away. Dr. Cruz was a trailblazer in public health field and was instrumental in the fight against AIDS at the height of the HIV AIDS epidemic. His activism was recognized by everyone from being honored by the Latino Commission on AIDS to his appointment to President Obama's Advisory Council on HIV and AIDS. As an openly HIV positive elected official, I am extraordinarily grateful for the work of people like Umberto Cruz. I am alive today because of the work that he and many others did for people living with AIDS. He'll be deeply missed, but his legacy of activism and innovation in public health will never die. And now I would ask everyone to rise and take a moment of silence for everyone that we've lost. Thank you. <clears throat> this is our last stated before the Easter and Passover season. These are two incredibly important and beautiful holidays for the Christian and Jewish faiths. And I know many of us here today will be celebrating one or both of these holidays. And so I wish everyone a happy Easter and a happy Pesach. Let's dive into our agenda for the day. The council will vote on the following Article 11 property tax exemptions. Uh, one in Prospect Park South portfolio in Councilman Rath Eugene's district will provide a partial 30-year exemption to eight buildings to preserve 384 units of affordable housing. The council will vote on the following land use items. Blondell Commons, applications to facilitate the development of a 172 unit, 100% affordable housing project in Councilmember Mark Jonai's district. 2069 Bruckner Boulevard, two mixed use buildings with 65 affordable home ownership units and 265 affordable rental units in Councilmember Ruben Diaz Sr.'s district and McDonald Avenue Catering, a zoning map amendment to facilitate the operation of a banquet facility in Councilmember Brad Landers District. And lastly, very exciting site selection for a new 322 seat primary school in Councilmember Carlos Menchaca's district. I wanna thank the land use staff who worked on these items, Jeff Yoon and Chelsea Kelly. Moving on, the council will be voting today on the following legislation. We are voting on the Climate Mobilization Act, our own version of the Green New Deal. Our planet is closing in on a breaking point. We must, we have to transition from investing in fossil fuel infrastructure to clean, renewable energy. We have to act decisively and we have to act now. And I am very proud that this city council is leading the charge in helping our planet fight climate change, which is an existential threat to our existence. Our Environmental Protection Committee Chair, an amazing, smart, hardworking, advocate, legislator, and champion, Councilmember Costa Constantinides, has been, has been an incredible, incredible, incredible leader on this issue, understanding it in a granular way, 
fighting back exemptions that would have weakened the bill, educating the public on the importance of this, and working on this issue for years. I am so proud of this day for him and for our city and for the world, and you will hear from him soon. Chair Costanides has been working, as I said, very hard, and we are very proud to vote on the following bills sponsored by the chair. Introduction 1253C. This was a Megilla. <laughs> it is going to mandate that buildings over 25,000 square feet are not allowed to emit greenhouse gases at higher levels than set forth in the, in the leg legislation. These large buildings are responsible for 30% of the greenhouse gas emissions in New York City. This bill would lower those emissions by 40% by 2030 and 80% by 2050. The emissions limits are set based on the occupancy group of the building and are calculated to require emissions reductions from the highest emitting 20% of buildings in 2024 and the highest emitting 75% of buildings in 2030. The bill will also create the Office of Energy Emissions Performance within the Department of Buildings to oversee the implementation of this legislation and to recommend future policy on building emissions. Introduction 1252A would establish the Property Assessed Clean Energy Program, the PACE program, in New York City. With this program, more building owners will be able to make the alterations required to reduce greenhouse gas emissions citywide. Introduction 1317A would clarify the Department of Buildings' obligation to include wind energy generation in its toolbox of renewable energy technologies by establishing additional requirements regarding the construction, installation, and maintenance of large wind turbines in the city. Introduction 1318A would mandate an assessment by the Mayor's Office of Sustainability or such other office as the mayor may designate on the feasibility of replacing in-city gas-fired power plants with battery storage powered by renewable sources. And Resolution 845, which would call on the New York State Department of Environmental Con Conservation to deny the water quality certification permit for the construction of the Northeast Supply Enhancement Pipeline, also known as the Williams Pipeline through New York Harbor. This... We have more bills from other council members, but all of those bills, each one of them is complicated. Each one of them requires an enormous amount of attention. Each one of them has required years of hard work and study and meeting with many, many, many stakeholders and advocates. And our chair has done that work literally day after day, week after week, month after month, when other people wanted to rush this process, the chair said, slow down so we can get this right and pass the most far-reaching, progressive, forward-thinking, important piece of climate change legislation that any municipality will have ever passed in the world. And so today is a day for celebration for the city of New York because we are laying the groundwork for other municipalities to be able to follow our lead. If we can do it in New York City, in the largest city in the United States, in a beacon for the entire world, in a city with a diverse building stock of uh, small buildings and large buildings and hospitals and houses of worship, all of these type of buildings, any other city should be able to do it as well. And that is because of the incredible staff here who have worked so hard along with the Mayor's Office of Sustainability, who I see are here. I want to thank them for their partnership and help in making today happen. But really, we would not be at this day less than a week before Earth Day if it wasn't for our great friend and colleague, and I want to give him a big round of applause, Councilmember Costa Constantinides. And Madam Majority Leader, I would ask uh, for when we get to uh, remarks, if we could uh, not have a time limit on the chair's ability to speak on this package of legislation. 
Certainly. Thank you. Uh, next, we're going to hear, uh, we're going to vote on two bills sponsored by another great environmental champion who has done amazing work in this council, Council Member Rafael Espinal. Introduction 1031A will require the Office of Alternate Energy to post and maintain links on its website to information regarding the installation of green roofs and resources and materials regarding green roof systems. And introduction 1032A will require the inclusion of sustainable roofing, of a sustainable roofing zone, which is a photovoltaic energy generating system or a green roof in the construction uh, of new buildings or buildings that are undergoing certain major renovations. Uh, next, introduction uh, 276A, sponsored by Councilmember Donovan Richards, would adjust the requirements of introduction 1032A for certain smaller residential buildings. It will also require the Department of Housing Preservation and Development to study the impact that compliance with introduction 1032A may have on affordability, while also allowing HPD to limit such requirements for certain buildings. Next, introduction 1251A, sponsored by Councilmember Andy Cohen, would address concerns from building owners that, energy, that the energy grading scale of Local Law 33 of 2018 does not accurately reflect a building's efficiency. This bill would adjust the grading scale, assigning higher grades to efficient buildings, which, would, which they would then be required to post. And Resolution 66, sponsored by Councilmember Steve Levin, will call upon the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation that would increase the real property tax abatement for the installation of a green roof to $15 per square foot, which would provide an incentive for property owners to build green roofs. The staff on this has been amazing. We are so fortunate that in this council we have unbelievably talented people that do this work every single day. We can only do this work because of the talented staff that we have, and many of them are here, and I would love for them to stand up as I call their name. Some of them are already standing up. Uh, Nicola Ben, uh, Austin, Bra uh, Austin Branford, Samara Swanston, Nadia Johnson, Ricky Chala, Brooke Fry, Tirza Nasser, Megan Chen, Brad Reed, John Seltzer, and I'd love the folks from the Mayor's Office of Sustainability to stand as well, because this was a very wonderful joint effort between all of our teams, and I want to give a big thank you to all the staff who worked on this. We are also voting on uh, a bill you may have heard about before, Introduction 1527, sponsored by Council Members Brad Lander and Margaret Chin. It will require that a five cent fee be imposed starting on March 1st, 2020, uh, on uh, paper bags. And it would exempt any customer from paying the fee who uses SNAP program, special supplemental nutrition program for women, infants, and children, or any other successor programs as full or partial payment towards the items purchased in a covered store. I'm really proud we are doing this. The council was at the forefront of the fight to limit the consumption of single-use plastic bags, and this is an excellent companion bill to the upcoming statewide ban on plastic bags. Plastic bags are a scourge on New York City and on our environment. I will leave it to Council Members Chin and Lander to speak about it, but they as well deserve an enormous amount of credit. They've been at this for years organizing. The Council took action on this, but then the State Legislature uh, sort of took that action away from us, and uh, then luckily we have seen uh, movement uh, at the state level to ban plastic bags and allow municipalities to opt in to this five cent fee on paper bags. So I'm really proud we're doing this today. I want to thank the staff who worked on this as well. Chris Sartori, Patrick Mulvihill, Nicola Ben, Nadia Johnson, Tirza Nasser, Megan Chen, and Brad Reed. A lot of people want to talk about the price tag associated with the bills that we are passing today. And it's a fair question and a question that we have to be able to answer and discuss in a thoughtful way, in a way that makes sense, but there is really no price tag that you can put on the future of life on our planet. And we must reduce, reduce, reduce carbon emissions. It is literally killing the planet. We are a carbon, we are a coastal city, and it is time for us to lead. We are leading today, and I am so proud of all the advocates 
I am so proud of all the advocates who are in uh, the balcony here today who have been fighting on the front lines for years, being far ahead of the curve. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Every major civil rights movement, movement for progress in the United States of America, whether it be the anti-war movement or the movement for LGBT civil rights or the movement for African American civil rights or the farm workers movement or the labor movement, all of these movements were not led by politicians. They were led by people. They were led by people who organized and spoke out and decided that it was time for significant change. And the people who are sitting in this balcony and the people who they represent are the people who are leading this Green New Deal environmental justice movement. And these are folks that have been at it for years, long before it was a cause that was in the headlines every single day. And so today is a joint effort between the administration, the council, the stakeholders who are affected by the legislation we're passing today, and all of the advocates who have really shown amazing uh, metal in getting us to today. So I want to congratulate them as well. I think that concludes our agenda for today's stated meeting, and I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. And I am now gonna move us into general discussion and on general orders. I would now like to call up uh, Council Member Costa Costantinides. And again, Madam Majority Leader, no clock for the Council Member. Certainly. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. And first, let me begin by, you know, Speaker Johnson, I, I, I can't thank you enough for your leadership, your forward thinkingness, your your desire to make this city a greener and sustainable place for not just now, but for you know, 40 years from now. When my little boy, uh, in 2050, when the worst impacts of climate change, they said, will be felt, 2050 and beyond, my little boy will be a man the same age that I am now. And he will look back on this and say, thank you, Speaker Johnson, for leading. So really, thank you, brother. Um, Today, I ask my colleagues to join me and pass the New York City Climate Mobilization Act. The centerpiece of this act is intro 1253C, which require buildings 25,000 square feet, of which there are only about 50,000 in the city of New York, to meet emissions targets beginning in 2024. These 50,000 buildings, even though they represent a very small number, 50,000 out of a million one, are the worst emitters in New York City. They are responsible for 30% of our overall emissions in the city of New York. Uh, under this bill, the worst 20%, the worst performers will have to meet a target based on their benchmarking data they've provided to the city by 2024. Then in 2030, the middle percentages will have to also retrofit as well. For this class, however, an advisory board will be empowered to take a hard look at the metric and determine, based on the experience of the first class, if a different approach might be better. This new metric, however, must be at least as strict as our carbon metric, and it must get us to the 40 percent reduction by 2030. This will apply to all buildings in this class. We as a city can't put stringent requirements on the private sector and not be held to the same standard. Finally, we have also ensured that this does not fall on the backs of the most vulnerable. That's why rent regulated and senior affordable housing will have to follow a set of prescripted requirements such as installing individual temperature controls and heat sensors, things that would not cause MCIs. You know, whether, you know, these requirements will not trigger rent hikes at risk only further destabilizing our neighborhoods. Parents should be able to put their kids to bed without worrying that their homes will be taken away from them by rising rents or rising seas. Housing of, houses of worship will also be held to these prescriptive standards because while we must reach the 40 by 30 standard, we must be respectful of our city's prayer sanctuaries, many of which are also landmarked. Hospitals will be held to a specific standard that takes into account their unique energy needs and the role that they play in protecting health and the safety of New Yorkers. And again, all the carbon targets in these bills have been calculated so they can all hit their goals. No two buildings are alike, 
and all buildings will need help. So that's why in this bill we create the Office of Building Energy and Emissions Performance to oversee the implementation of the building standards, to give technical assistance to building owners. And if a building owner is suffering a true financial hardship or have made good faith efforts to buy green energy credits, only to find that they can't get them, for instance, the office can be empowered to help them out and get an adjustment if really needed. If a building is landmarked, they can also apply to get that assistance. Finally, the bill will also create a study to see if a cap and trade or a portfolio model approach might be used to hit these targets. To help us pay for all this, we're also patching, passing 12, intro 1252, which recreates the city PACE program. With this program, property owners can be eligible for loans with little or no upfront cost, structured in their payoff of the life of the technology. This way, debt service is literally limited to the amount they end up saving from energy costs. Not only has this program worked in other cities like Chicago, but it's been used across the towns in New York State. Also in the Cliber Mobilization Act is Intro 1317, which creates standards for large wind turbines, and Intro 1318, which directs the state to study the phase out of all of our fossil fuel plants with using solar, battery storage, and other renewable energies. The speaker talked about the crossroads we are on. We all know humanity's role in, in climate change and the effect it will have. We know that these major impacts from stronger hurricanes and increased precipitation will cause sea level rise and the impact of our, our city. There are talks about the Rockaways, Coney Island, and neighborhoods in Staten Island literally being wiped off the map by the end of the century if we do not act. We see the seriousness of this and have to take real action. Our children and our children's ch children implore us to do this. No single-handed policy can completely reverse the effects of climate change. But this policy, when enacted, will be the largest emissions reduction policy in the history of New York City or any city anywhere. And I just want to say how proud I am to work with the advocates Henry Garrido in DC 37, Align, Maritza Silva Farrell, uh, Pete Sikora, New York Communities for Change, and all of the advocates. I can't name each and every one of you, but thank you for fighting for a greener city. Thank you for all my colleagues who have worked so very hard with me, getting down in the weeds and making sure that we get this right. I will, you know, we always will appreciate you. And to the staff, uh, Nicola Bean, as the speaker said, uh, Nicola Bean, uh, Austin Branford, Megan Chen, Tears and Nasser, Samara Swanston, Nadia Johnson, Jeff Baker, Laura Popa, Brooke Fry, Ricky Chawla, Jonathan Seltzer, uh, my own staff, my legislative attorney, Nicholas Wazowski, my chief of staff, Nick Rolson, Terrence Cullen, uh, Nikki Kokinos, Josephine Germosen, Michael Corbett, Joy Chowdhury, uh, and the mayor's office of sustainability as well. There's been a lot of sleepless nights. I can attest, I've been dreaming about this bill for weeks now and haven't been getting much sleep. But dreams, dreams, good dreams, good dreams. And you know, my little boy who I talked about before is nine years old. And he asked me, he was so excited today about the bill being passed. But when he becomes of age, and all of our sons and daughters become of age, what will be the New York we're leaving them? This is a down payment on their future, the planet that we're borrowing from them, the city that we're borrowing from them, I am so proud that we're able to say to them, when they ask us, what did you do against climate change? What did you do about the greatest threat in the history of the United States, as President Obama has talked about? We can say we took real, meaningful action. Thank you very much, Mary Majority Leader. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Costa Costantinides. Our children and our children's children's children, thank you. <laughs> and now we will call up Council Member Chin. Um, thank you, my, uh, Majority Leader. Um, as a representative of lower Manhattan neighborhoods, we are still fighting to fully recover from Superstorm Sandy. I have seen firsthand the undeniable urgency to pass legislation to protect our environment. And I wanted to congratulate and thank Chair Constantinis uh, and all the colleagues on this, uh, and our speaker on this Climate Mobilization Act. Uh, but when it comes to plastic bag pollution, 
that regularly clogs our storm drain, pollute our rivers and litter our trees and parkland. We know that single-use bags are not free. There is a cause, and that is born unfairly by low-income communities of color who have to deal with the quality of life and public health repercussion of transporting thousands of tons of plastic bag waste every year. Our council knew this in 2016 when we passed to bring us closer to our goal to reduce single-use plastic bag waste. In order to educate and empower New Yorkers, we had to work against a well-funded misinformation campaign by the plastic bag industry that sought to hide the true cause of plastic bags from New Yorkers. I'm pleased that after preempting our law, the state has finally heard our call and allow a sensible measure to limit the use of plastic bags. But we need to ensure that plastic bags are not merely substituted by paper bag waste, which can be 20 to 30 times heavier. We must act to impose a modest fee on these and other single-use bags. Our legislation, Intro 1527, would also create a multilingual education for all communities and small businesses, a dedicated fund to distribute free reusable bags to low-income New Yorkers, and also exempt residents from SNAP and also from WIC. Now, we have seen other states and countries set a global model to fight plastic bag pollution. It's time for New York City to emerge as a leader in its own right. Thank you, Speaker Johnson, for moving this so quickly. And of course, my partner, Council Member Lander, and Chair Reynoso, for your unwavering support. And of course, to the diverse coalition of advocates who've been there with us from the beginning, especially our school children, our youngsters, our future leader who's been with us all the way fighting for this, and I urge my colleague to vote for Intro 1527. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Chin and Lander, for your bravery and your courage, but most importantly, your determination. Mm. We'll now call up Councilmember Menchaca. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I want to speak and give incredible props to Councilmember Costa Constantinides, the entire team of staff that have been working on this for so many years. Uh, but I want to also take this opportunity to thank all the people on the ground in our neighborhoods. I represent Red Hook and Sunset Park. You have organizations like Uprose who have been fighting this fight for such a long time. Uh, every opportunity to be heard, uh, bringing young people to the forefront, creating an intergenerational uh, space for advocacy. And now on the floor of the city council, we get to pass incredible legislation. Uh, during the, the hearing, we heard so much from young people and everyone, everyone. But I want to I want to express the, just the incredible, passionate uh, work that young people have been doing in our neighborhoods. When we think about the work that we have to do next, I also want to hark and think about the jobs that are being created that are going to help get us to these goals uh, and these caps. This is going to create a massive amount of jobs, and the people on the ground that are gonna be working are gonna be construction workers, including immigrants and day laborers. We are in the middle of a situation where we are pushing development because of the Green Deal, but on top of that, we need to make sure that all of these workers are safe. We, ju we just heard from three, uh, uh, the speaker talked about the three members of our community who died. These are Latinos, these are, these are immigrants who are dying on our construction sites. So as we push for these measures for green, economy, we got to make sure that they get training and safety. And this city council has committed to that today to ensure that we get that. Uh, more to come at the next stated, because we will be pushing legislation to, to extend the deadline uh, that we have set at the city council, but also bring new resources and new ideas for that access to construction safety education. So let us not forget those that we just uh, honor today in the deaths of our construction, and let's honor the new workers that are going to come with incredible safety. Thank you, Costa. Thank you, uh, Speaker, and the rest of the council. Thank you. I'm now going to call forward Councilmember Van Bramer. Thank you very much, and with your permission, I'd like to vote aye on all. Permission granted. Thank you. We're now going to call on Councilmember Koo. Thank you, Majority Leader. 
Thank you to all of those who stopped by yesterday and supported the students in the historic first hackathon in New York City Hall. Thank you, Speaker Johnson, for making it possible. Tomorrow is uh, Passover and Sunday is Easter, so I want to wish everyone a happy holidays. And also today, voting on legislation that will impact hospitals. Take care of the, our environment is something we must all do. Hospitals were concerned about this, but thank you to uh, Councilmember Constantinidis for working with them on the new targets and, com and compromises. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Ku. Thank you and report of special committees. None. Me, Madam, Madam President, I believe that my name is on the list. You are on the list for general discussions. Okay, well, that was an error. I apologize. May I speak now? Yes, permission granted. Thank you, Madam President. Today we're passing monumental, groundbreaking environmental protections of which we can and should all be proud. As I said this morning at committee, Mr. Chairman Konstantinidis deserves much credit for leading his life's work to today's achievements. I will join uh, in voting for the entire package that's coming out of the Environmental Protection Committee. I think it's wise, and I'm grateful for his leadership. I rise to speak on another bill that's coming from a different committee, Introduction 1527. Um, Mr. Speaker is right that those utilizing the uh, brown paper bags, uh, if they are using their benefits card at the time they're making their purchase, will not pay a fee. However, I think there's an important distinction, and as the speaker said when he mentioned it, it's if they're using their card in full or in part. But as we know, those of us who have been involved for a long time uh, in the business of helping people with their benefits, benefits run out in the middle of the month, sometimes even earlier than that. And the distinction that we need to note today is that once the benefits run out, if somebody who is poor, somebody who has benefits pays cash for their products, they will not receive a free bag. The poor will not be completely exempt, only when they're using their benefits card. And I think it's important to note that because I do believe this is a tax. I believe it's a tax on the people who can least afford it. I know there are very good reasons to do this. I know there are. And the people who are supporting this have their hearts in it for the right reasons. I believe it and I, I know it's true. But I also think that we do need to think about those who can't afford it, those who are having trouble making ends meet, those who need a little extra. And they will have this tax on them. And for that reason, Madam President, I will be voting aye on the entire package, but I will not be able to join in voting uh, for intro 1527. Thank you for accommodating me, and I apologize for the uh, switch on the list. Thank you. Report of Standing Committees. Report of the Committee on Environmental Protection, intros 276A through 1318A on page two, Climate Mobilization Act. Happily, in an excited way, amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, pre-considered Reso 846, organization funding. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered LU 395 and Reso 851, Prospect Park South. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 369 and Reso 852, McDonald Avenue. Coupled on general orders. LU 373 and Reso 853 through LU 375 and Reso 855, Blondell Commons. Coupled on general orders. LU 379 and 380, 1640 Flatbush Avenue. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D <coughs> of the New York City Charter. Excuse me, LU 382 and Reso 856 through LU 385 and Reso 859, Bruckner Boulevard. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 396 and Reso 860, school facility. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste Management. Pre-considered intro 1527, paper bag fee. Couple of general orders. On the general order calendar, intro 720, site safety training. We're recommitting this to the Committee on Housing and Buildings. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Uh, Commissioner of Deeds is coupled to general orders, and at this time, I would ask for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Valone. I'd like to vote aye on all and wish everyone a happy Easter and a Passover and blessings to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Moya. Aye on all. Rosenthal. Uh, with permission, I'd like to vote on all land use call-ups and coupled items on the general order calendar and all resolutions 
um, and congratulate Councilmember Constantinides on this historic legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Rodriguez. I would like to have permission to vote on all general orders and land use, especially those that are a environmental friendly bill. A congratulations, Constant, the speaker, and all the advocates. With these bills, we will be doing what we can to save our planet. So with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Adams. Aye. Ampri Samuel. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I just want to congratulate all my colleagues on this package of bills, um, but I just want to just speak briefly on um, 1527. This was a very uh, a real struggle for me because I remember when this conversation about charging five cents per bag came up in my community, and a lot of seniors um, felt some kind of way about it and did talk about the stress that this would cause on them. And um, I will say that I do appreciate the fact that we will be able to have a robust initiative of being able to provide reusable bags throughout the community and, and to those who will need it so that there won't be this five cent fee. But I just wanted to say on the record that I did struggle with 1527 um, just up into just a few minutes ago, honestly. Um, but I do vote aye on all and appreciate everyone's efforts um, on the bills. And I do vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Ayala. I vote aye on all. Baron. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I just want to echo the comments made by, made by my colleague, uh, Alika Samuels. And I also want to say I vote aye on all, with the exception of land use 374, no, I'm sorry, 379 and 380 and the accompanying resolutions. I believe that until this body takes a strong look at what we are saying is affordable, and until we move away from the 25% afford so-called affordable and 75% market, we're doing a disservice to the people who live here. Thank you. Borelli. I and all accept intro 276, 1032, 1253, 1527. Thank you. Brennan. Aye. Cabrera. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. I want to say a special thanks to Council Member uh, Margaret Chin uh, for her leadership and alongside uh, Brad Lander, Council Member Lander as well. Uh, we have literally hundreds of thousands of bags uh, the Department of Sanitation has available uh, for those who are uh, in need of them. Uh, I was one of those who was against this bill uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, but when I started seeing bags flying all over my districts in trees and causing all kinds of uh, clogging in the drainage system, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and seeing what was uh, happening in all the states where some of my brothers live, and there's life after this bill, and it's going to be good for the environment. And also, I want to congratulate my colleague Constantinides. Uh, and thank you for your consideration with the Houses of Worship. They do have a responsibility uh, for the environment as well, uh, but it was just right. It was just right, all the adjustments that were made and their consideration. And with that, I vote aye and all. Thank you, and happy belated birthday, Councilmember Cabrera. Thank you. Thank you so much. Chin. Um, I vote aye on all, and I wanted to... Uh, Tell my colleague, I look forward to uh, coming to your district to help the Department of Sanitation uh, to give out reusable bags uh, to seniors, to low-income families. Uh, I think it's going to be exciting. It might be difficult in the beginning, but I think people will get used to it. And I also um, really wanted to congratulate uh, Chair Constantini again because New York, is take, New York City is taking the lead. It's time for uh, environmental justice, um, and we're make, taking a big step. And uh, I want to wish everyone a happy Passover and happy Easter, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Cohen. I vote aye. Constantinidis. Madam Majority Leader, may I be excused to explain my vote? 
Permission granted. I'll be very brief. I just want to congratulate all of my colleagues today who are passing legislation, Councilmember Espinal on his Green Roofs bills, Councilmember uh, Donovan Richards, who's been a great environmental advocate in his own right and doing so many amazing things. So thank you, Councilmember Richards, and to Brad Lander and, and Councilmember Chin as well. Congratulations on your legislation. I know it's been a long time, and um, thank you again to the Speaker Johnson. I vote proudly aye on all. Thank you. Carnegie. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Um, I want to first say that for the first year since I've been in the council, I got 100 on my environmental. <laughs> um, so I will be keeping with that. I knew you'd clap, Donovan. Uh, so I want, to, I want to keep with that. I want to say congratulations to council members Espinal, Richards, Constantinides, Chin, and Landa. Um, many people know that in the last session I did vote no on the bags, but due to um, commitment from the, the chairs to do a, a very robust round of not only education but um, disbursement of bags, I changed to a yes. I'm proud to be a part of a body that is relentless in its pursuit to have a clean NYC. Um, I want to thank the speaker for his commitment to making sure that those people who have opposing views are protected and have an opportunity to have those opinions heard. Um, and on that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Diaz. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Chair Lady. I'm here to vote no on resolution 1513. 1514, 1522, 1527, 1530, 1532, 1540. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, 1527 will put a burden in senior citizens. I'm here to fight and protect senior citizens. I understand that it's a problem in the environment, but senior citizens will be burden. It's a burden on senior citizens and the city of New York, and we're here to protect, and I want senior citizen to, the senior citizen of, of New York City to know, especially in the Bronx, that they have someone here that will stand for them and will fight for them, and this is wrong uh, on senior citizens. I'm, I'm also voting no on resolution 847 and 848. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Happy holiday. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Majority Leader Combo. Well, I'm excited to be voting on these bills, bills that would make uh, New York City greener, cleaner, and more livable for all New Yorkers. Uh, as we all know, we're living at a time where our federal government continues to push back and roll back all of the progress we've made uh, in, in the conversation of fighting climate change. It's important for cities like New York uh, to step up with bolder and more aggressive policies. Uh, together with my colleagues, Council Members Donovan Richards and Steve Levin, we are passing a package of legislation that would require pretty much a lot of New York City buildings who, in the five boroughs to have a sustainable roof. I believe that these bills will deliver the type of action our country and the globe needs to fight climate change. Whether it's a green roof, as beautiful as the one we see on top of the Barclays Center, or, the so or solar panels, or both, in the 21st century, sustainability must be a part of our building's design. Before I go any further, I just want to give a few, a few quick shout outs uh, to a few folks who have been working with me on these bills for uh, many years. Uh, the founders of Brooklyn Grange, uh, the, People's the People's Climate March, Aziz Dekan, uh, Steve Peck, the founder of Green Roofs for Healthy Cities in Toronto, which has set the model for green roof legislation. Uh, Lisa Bloodgood from the Newtown Creek Alliance, Costa, uh, my colleague for getting this through uh, the committee and getting it to the floor for us to vote, and the speaker, of, for, of course. Uh, green roofs are pleasing to the eye, but they offer so much more than just a view. We can use green roofs to advance the cause of environmental justice, especially in neighborhoods like the ones I represent, where there's a, a disparity in air quality and green spaces. Green roofs reduce air pollution by absorbing pollutants. For example, in my, in my district, we have some of the worst asthma rates while we also have some of the worst air quality issues that green roofs can help alleviate. Uh, green roofs have been proven to help mitigate urban heat island effect by cooling down buildings, bringing much needed economic and physical relief for residents and businesses alike. A cooler building means more comfort and less energy costs. 
Not only do sustainable roofs reduce carbon emissions, they are also a boon to the local economy, creating good paying jobs and encouraging the growth of a green sector economy. There are many other environmental benefits like cleaner water, and I could go on and on and on, but I just, I just really want to say thank you to all my colleagues for voting on this bill, and it's a great day for New York. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, Madam, leadership. Madam Majority Leader, I just want to remind uh, the council members that are here that we are voting on two resolutions, which you'll bring up later in the agenda, and so we do need to maintain a quorum, so we need members to remain for the remainder of the meeting until we get to general discussion. Thank you. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, it's really a great honor to join with all of you in voting in the affirmative on this incredible package related to environmental justice and addressing climate change and really making sure that the city of New York is leading on this very important issue to save our planet. Um, I am grateful for our Environmental Protection Chair, Councilmember Costa Constantinides, and want to also thank Councilmember Donovan Richards, Councilmember Steve Levin, and Councilmember Rafael Espinal for their leadership and really making sure that the City of New York is not only leading the way, but we're looking at both short and long-term goals, um, recognizing that a lot of these efforts are going to take several years to implement. Um, I am also speaking on behalf of pre-considered intro 1527 and want to thank Councilmember Margaret Chin and Councilmember Brad Lander for their leadership and also acknowledging and going on the record two years ago when this body voted to uh, impose a fee on plastic bags. I was one of those council members that was opposed to the idea of imposing a fee for many of the sentiments that have already been expressed in terms of low income and vulnerable communities feeling that burden at a greater advantage and during that time as an elected official we are always in the business of learning and growing and certainly this is an effort we are undertaking that is going to change the behavior and the practice uh, that New Yorkers have and so while this legislation is really codifying what the state legislature has done and really making sure that the city of New York is going to now uh, buy into this effort um, I'm grateful and calling all of my colleagues particularly my Bronx delegation to make sure that we can aggressively get all of our Bronx residents, our supermarkets and small businesses on board so we can help educate our residents so that we can all be a part of saving our community and living in a cleaner environment for the sake of our children. So with that, congratulations colleagues. I wish you all a happy holidays, happy Passover, happy Easter, and happy Resurrection Sunday. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Gorenczyk. Uh, just briefly, Madam Majority Leader, if you'll indulge me, I, I want to thank uh, Chair Constantinidis uh, for listening to and acting upon the concerns that I had that uh, would have affected over 10,000 families in my district. Uh, with that, I vote aye on all except for 1527, which is a no, and I wish everybody a joyous holiday weekend regarding uh, Passover and Easter. Thank you. Thank you. Holden. Uh, I vote aye on all except intro 1527, which I see as just a, another tax, especially on seniors. Kalos. Congratulate, with congratulations to uh, Costa, Brad, and Margaret, I vote aye on all. King. Congratulations to all that got legislation passed today. Constantini, job well done. I vote aye on all and happy resurrection season to all. Ku. Congratulations to uh, Councilmember Constantinidis, uh, Councilmember Chin and Nanda, and also Councilmember Espinal uh, for passing important bills today. Uh, I will eye on all. Thank you. Kozlowitz. I want to congratulate my colleague Costas and my friend on his magnificent legislation. I won't be around in 2050, but my grandchildren will. So thank you. And also to Margaret and Brad, uh, thank you. I'm already collecting my bags, you know, to go shopping. And uh, I want to wish everybody happy holidays. Thank you. And you're going to live forever, Karen. And Karen, how do you vote on all? I vote aye. <laughs> I hope my hair looks that good in 2050, because <laughs> you look amazing. Lanceman. 
No on 1527, but aye on the rest. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I've said this before, but it really is true. Every night when I get home, my daughter Rosa, who's 15, says to me, Dad, what did you do today about climate change? This planet that you're handing off to us needs urgent action. What did you do about it today? And I'll be honest, most days I don't have anything that good to tell her. Um, but today, there's a lot to say, and I want to give big props to Costa on all the legislation there to be able to say we're passing uh, the most aggressive action to reduce emissions and energy consumption in our largest buildings is extraordinary. Uh, to Councilmember Espinal, the bill requiring solar and green roofs on top of new construction is going to make a huge difference in Gowanus and all throughout the city. Uh, and obviously, I am thrilled that we are finally taking action to get rid of the scourge of plastic and single-use bags. Three years ago, this council, in a close vote, and I'm really encouraged by uh, the fact that today's vote, I think, will be a stronger one, voted 28-20 uh, to take action on bags. Uh, but as you know, the state overturned us. And in that time, we have sent, spent, sent over 25 billion single-use bags to our landfills, 25 billion bags, hundreds of thousands of pounds of solid waste, costing the city something like $50 million. Uh, and finally, we are going to take real action, not just to get them out of the trees and the storm drains, but to get them out of our landfills as well. Here's the beautiful thing. That little fee, as much as it annoys people, uh, it acts incredibly to get people to bring reusable bags instead of take a new one. And all across the world, all across the country, in all kinds of cities, regardless of people's income, their race, their age, their family size, whether they think of themselves as environmentalists, that small fee helps all of us bring reusable bags and stop having waste that we just don't need. Big props to the advocates, to NRDC, New York League of Conservation Voters, PlasticBaglaws.org, NILPI, Citizens Campaign for the Environment, and so many more who got us here today. I vote aye on all. Thank you, and thank you for your leadership. Levin. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to thank uh, and congratulate all of my colleagues uh, on their legislation passing today, Council Members Lander and Chin. Uh, uh, on this uh, amazing and long fought and hard fought uh, uh, victory here on, on this legislation. Congratulations, um, uh, Councilmember Espinal, uh, for uh, his uh, amazing work on advancing green roofs in, uh, in our city. Um, uh, Councilmember Richards, um, uh, for his work as well, uh, to the speaker and to the entire staff here at the council. Uh, uh, it's uh, unquantifiable how many hours went into this package of legislation, um, staff hours, really uh, 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 considerate thought uh, in making sure that we are doing uh, the best that we could do and, and uh, being responsible to future generations. Um, obviously want to acknowledge all the advocates that worked hard on these issues, uh, the environmental advocates, uh, the social justice advocates. Um, uh, who have made climate change and combating climate change a priority um, uh, for our city and realizing um, the economic impact and the social impact um, that this is going to have for many years to come and making sure that we are doing everything we can. And, uh, and last and, and, and most importantly, I want to acknowledge Costa Constantinidis, um, who was so... Uh, considerate and thorough and thoughtful uh, uh, in, in negotiating this legislation and was, um, was a, a total professional and uh, made sure that this bill uh, was the best that it could be, that it wasn't rushed. Uh, he toiled on this for, for over two years uh, and, and, uh, and as a result we have a bill that we can all be proud of, uh, that the entire city can be proud of. Uh, and we are handing off a better city to future generations. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you, Madam Thank Majority you. Leader. Mario. Uh, no on 1527, no on 1253, no on 1032 and 276. Aye and the rest. Thank you. Levine. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, with profound, heartfelt gratitude and congratulations to Councilmember Constantinidis and, of course, the other sponsors of the great bills today, Councilmembers Chen, Lander, Espinal, 
And with best wishes to New Yorkers celebrating and observing Pesach and Easter in the coming days, I proudly vote, aye on all. Maisel. Uh, no on 1527, yes and everything else. Menchaca. I on all. Miller. Permission to explain? Permission granted. First of all, I'd like to congratulate my colleagues on this incredibly courageous legislation that is being passed today, particularly uh, Costa, uh, for your hard work, uh, former chair Richard and Margaret. Um, this has been a long time coming. Congratulations. Uh, before I vote aye on all, uh, but I also want to say that I did some investigation and there is absolutely no truth to the rumor that our colleague Robert Carnegie will be leaving to coach St. John University. <laughs> and happy holidays to all, aye on all. Powers. I vote aye and a very big congratulation to my colleagues, including Costa, for his bill today. Thank you for all the hard work, thanks. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I want to congratulate uh, Margaret Chin and Brad Lander for the work that they did uh, with the single-use bags and this council for being thoughtful about a comprehensive approach to dealing with single-use plastic and single-use uh, paper bags. Uh, I also want to let the council know you can call me the reusable bag man. If you need bags, give me a call and I will make sure that the Department of Sanitation gets to your bags. Uh, you can text me or you can shoot me a call. Okay. I'll make sure it happens. Uh, <laughs> I, yes, I'll, I'll get a beeper. There you go. Uh, and for uh, Costa, I wanna, uh, I'm giving out names. Uh, the New York City Council's uh, Captain Planet for the work that he did today. Really want to give him a shout because this was not easy to do. And again, the, the City Council is being comprehensive about what, how they're thinking about the environment. So thank you, Costa, for the work you did. Um, and to my colleagues, Donovan Richards, Steve Levin, and Rafa Aspinall, also being a part of, of the team and making sure that this city um, will look much better or be left in a better place because of the work you did. And my 15-month-old baby, Alejandro, is gonna be very grateful for the work that we did here today. So thank you, and I vote aye on all. Richards. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Happy to follow uh, Bagman, I guess we can call you. Now, Renoso, right? Bagman. Uh, what an honor to be here today. First off, uh, let me start by thanking the speaker uh, and both uh, Chair Costa, uh, Constantinidis, and my other colleagues on this outstanding package of bills. You know, these, these bills are really bold. They are a bold response uh, to the effects of climate change. And I know Debbie Rose sits to my left. I know Carlos Menchaca represents Red Hook, Carlina represents the Lower East Side, and our, our communities were impacted uh, by Hurricane Sandy, and we need a bold response to really, res to, to scourge, to stop the scourge of climate change for our communities. On a day like this, when it rains, uh, Danique Miller and I know there will be homeowners in our districts uh, whose basements are underwater. Uh, when we have these storms that seem to be coming more ferociously and frequently uh, over the few months of the year, uh, the communities like the Rockaways are impacted horribly, flooding, you can't even drive uh, through roads. So when people talk about the impacts later, we are living with the impacts now, and this is why these, these bills are good. I'm happy to sponsor Intro 276, which will require buildings five stories or smaller to install green roof solar panels or small wind turbines uh, as we move forward. Um, I know I got a few seconds left, but I'm just thinking back to those senior citizens who could not walk downstairs in their buildings because their common areas weren't lit, they couldn't get access to their, to their drugs if they needed it. Um, I know when I got elected, there were still people without electricity. Uh, I mean, you're talking over a year after Hurricane Sandy had already occurred. So having solar panels and, and a renewable future will ensure that our communities could survive uh, in the future. So once again, I want to thank Costa uh, for thinking out of the box uh, and really being courageous in moving this package of bills and all my other colleagues. And with that being said, I vote aye. Rivera. 
Congratulations, everyone. It's really exciting that we're taking action now for the future, and I proudly vote aye on all. Rose. I want to congratulate my colleagues on these historic environmentally responsible bills, and um, I vote aye on all. Salamanca. Aye on all. Torres. Aye on all. Traeger. Permission to explain my, my vote, please? Permission granted. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'd like to speak about intro 1527. In the previous council, I did not uh, support the bill that created a fee on plastic bags because I felt the bill did not go far enough. I wanted a ban. I wanted it also back in 20, 2007 when I worked for a state lawmaker part-time, worked on a bill in Albany to ban plastic bags in New York State. And we were told it would never happen. Take a good look today. California has banned plastic bags and imposed a fee on paper bags back in 2014. And I'm glad that we are now taking bolder steps with this current measure. As someone who has argued that the city has not done enough to reduce, reuse, and recycle, and as someone who has joined Southern Brooklyn residents in opposition to a waste transfer station that now stands facing my district, I think it would be hypocritical for us to block measures that reduce the amount of waste we are producing. So I am glad that we are taking steps to do away with plastic bags in New York, and I support this legislation because this fee can help us reduce reliance on paper bags while helping cover the cost of reusable bags for New Yorkers. And with that, also I want to commend all my colleagues on their, on their great bills, and big shout out, he deserves a lot of kudos today, Costa, because he really listened to everyone's concerns. Uh, he made adjustments where, ne where he felt were necessary, but never compromised the integrity of, of his bills. He is a true lawmaker in every sense of the word, a true public servant, and with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you, and happy belated birthday, Councilmember Traeger. Ulrich. I vote aye on all, with the exception of preconsidered intro 1527. Jaeger. I vote aye on all, with the exception of 1527, and my best wishes to all for a wonderful Easter and a wonderful Pesach. Thank you. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of intro 1527, which was adopted by a vote of 38 in the affirmative, nine negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 276A, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 1032A, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 1253C, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. Thank you. Quiet in the chamber. We are now going to go to introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to committee as indicated on the agenda. And Madam Majority Leader, <clears throat> I was remiss <clears throat> on all of the very complicated bills that we voted on uh, today. Uh, the amazing guy who runs this body every single day uh, did an incredible job. And I really, really want to thank 
uh, my Chief of Staff, who is an incredible resource to all the members and staff here, Jason Goldman, for his hard work on today. We will now move into the discussion of resolutions. Are there any members who wish to speak on any of today's current resolutions that we will be addressing shortly? Today's resolutions. If no members have signed up today to discuss today's resolutions, I will now read them into the record below. I'll now read today's resolutions into the record. Members who wish to vote against or abstain on any of these resolutions should register your vote with the clerk at the dais. Resolution 66, a resolution calling upon the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation that would increase the real property tax abatement for the installation of a green roof to $15 per square foot. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed. Abstentions. The ayes have it. Preconsidered Resolution 845, resolution calling upon New York State Department of Environmental Conservation to deny the water quality certification permit for the construction of the Northeast Supply Enhancement Pipeline through the New York Harbor. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed. Abstentions. The ayes have it. All right. We will now move into general discussion. We have two members that have asked to speak on today's general discussion, beginning with Council Member Barron, followed by Council Member Kalos. Uh, thank you. I just want to call attention to the fact that today we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the student strike and takeover at City College. And I was there earlier today. They had a commemoration service. And they wanted to highlight the fact that it was 50 years ago that the community residents, community activists, and students decided Quiet that- Quiet in the chamber. Thank you. Thank you. Decided that City College, in particular, was not doing enough. And it was their fight and their sacrifice that brought about open admissions that instituted an opportunity for students who graduated and need some remedial assistance to be able to get that, and to have black studies instituted in CUNY, ethnic studies, Spanish arts, ethnic studies as well, Puerto Rican studies as well. And it was a battle that was long time coming. Of course, it was 1969. It was an era when all of that was happening. And we've lost much of that. We no longer have the um, Child Development Center that had a focus from people who lived in the community. The president is talking about bringing in another agency to operate that, and we're going to look to see how we can combat that. But I just wanted to highlight the fact that it was 50 years ago that we did have the open admissions policy. And with pushback, we no longer have 40% black students at City College. We only have 18% black students at City College, and that's a problem, and that's an issue that we have to address. And finally, I just want to call attention to the passing of a dear friend of ours, um, Stanley Kennard passed. He was a great activist. He was an educator. He was a political person. He had a product of the New York City schools. He, he attended Amherst University, and while he was there, he was responsible for the founding of the W.E.B. Du Bois Department of African American Studies, which is one of the first departments to grant a um, degree in black studies. He was responsible for the founding of the Carter Woodson Cultural Literacy Project, as well as Heritage House, which is in my colleague's district in Brownsville. And he was a great fighter for Boys and Girls High School. He battled so that it would not be closed. He served on the school leadership team. He was a part of the um, care center, and he was a community associate. And he's going to be sorely missed. We extend our condolences to his family. He was a loving, selfless person. He talked about community all the time. And the reason that he did that was he was involved in making sure that we advance as a person. He's going to be sorely missed.
Thank, Thank you. you, and I share your sentiments. Thank you so much. Councilmember Kalos, followed by Councilmember Traeger. Parks should be for playing, not pesticides. All families should be able to enjoy our city parks without having to worry that they're being exposed to toxic pesticides that could give them and their families cancer. My daughter isn't allowed to play on the grass, especially because as a baby, she puts everything in her mouth. I look forward to working with all of you and our city agencies to ban toxic pesticides and keep our children safe. That's why today I'm joining with Councilmember Carlina Rivera, and we are proud to introduce uh, Bill 1524 that bans the use of toxic pesticides, including glyphosate, commonly known as Roundup, from city parks and lands. The evidence that Roundup poses a serious health threat is mounting despite Monsanto's efforts to defend its product. Recently, two courts have awarded $78 million and $80 million, respectively, to two groundskeepers when juries deemed they developed cancer in part from prolonged use of Roundup. New York City has relied on Roundup far too much. In 2016, Roundup was applied over 1,000 times by the city's Department of Parks and Recreation. Introduction 1524 moves city agencies to biological pesticides, which are derived from naturally occurring substances as opposed to synthetic substances. There's the general exception that biological pesticides are usually inherently less toxic than their conventional counterparts and are often much more effective at targeting a specific pest. Biological pesticides can also be used in smaller quantities and break down in the environment more rapidly. Further, the bill adds measures to prevent harmful pesticides from contaminating water systems by preventing synthetic pesticides from being sprayed within 75 feet of a body of water. I'd like to thank all of the parents, advocates. Actually, I introduced this bill on behalf of kindergartners and expect <laughs> uh, experts who helped us draft a bill that will put New York City at the forefront of banning toxic pesticides. You may have just heard from them now. I want to thank uh, a kindergarten teacher, Paul Ragovin who's kindergarten at class at PS290 first brought this issue to my attention and actually came to city council to advocate for this reform and uh, took over city hall with the cutest protest you'll ever see in your life. Thank you so much, council member Kalos. <laughs> and now we will have council member Traeger followed by council member Levin. Thank you. I'd like to speak about my new resolution 850, which calls on the New York state uh, government to pass and Governor Cuomo to sign into law legislation introduced earlier this year in the State Senate and the State Assembly by State Senator Roxanne Prasad and Assemblymember Michelle uh, Sawage. Uh, mm -hmm. That bill would help put an end to the unacceptable, antiquated practice of non consensual pelvic examinations conducted by medical students on unconscious patients. No patient should ever have to enter a medical facility for care and leave the victim of such an egregious violation of their body and their human rights. Medical students under the supervision of training physicians enter operating rooms and perform pelvic examinations on anesthetized uh, uh, patients prior to surgery. Although patients at teaching hospitals are provided with consent forms indicating the involvement of medical students, the forms do not always explicitly disclose the nature of this involvement. Horrifically, this is a practice that is legal in 45 U.S. states, including New York. The American Medical Association, the Association of American Medical Colleges, and the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists have all denounced the practice and recommended that patients must be specifically informed and provide consent before any such procedure can take place. The Senate and Assembly Bill would prohibit performing or supervising a pelvic examination on an anesthetized or unconscious female patient without first obtaining the patient's informed consent to the pelvic examination unless the examination is within the scope of the patient's surgical procedure or diagnostic examination uh, for which informed consent has been obtained. Thank you, and I urge my colleagues to sign on. Thank you, Councilmember Levin, followed by Councilmember Menchaca. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, today, I am proud to introduce Intro 1528, a bill that will increase opportunities for jail diversions citywide and improve access to health care treatment in the criminal justice system. This bill will establish a two-tiered health care screening for people who are arrested and awaiting arraignment, enabling defense attorneys and judges to assess, to assess health care needs and identify appropriate treatment before a person enters jail. According to the Vera Institute, more than 40% of people in the city's jail system receive some behavioral health services. These numbers are significant, and we know that for a vast majority of people with serious behavioral or mental health needs, jail is not the appropriate solution. 
we have an opportunity to improve our protocols before a person even enters the criminal justice system and divert them to the care and treatment that is right for them. As New York City works to close Rikers Island, we need to do everything that we can to decarcerate and effectively divert people out of jail and connect people to treatment and community supports that work. This program was first modeled in the Manhattan Detention Center in 2016 with great success. It's time that we take it citywide. I want to thank my colleagues, Council Members Carlos Menchaca, Diana Ayala, and Margaret Chin for introducing this legislation with me, and I urge all of my colleagues to sign on as well. That's intro 1528. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Menchaca. Thank you. I want to point uh, to uh, something I mentioned earlier when we were passing the incredible Green New Deal for New York City uh, and the incredible jobs that we're going to be creating. Our work sites, our construction sites are not safe. And the people who are dying are immigrants in our city who have yet to get access to construction safety classes, OSHA, the standards that this council voted on a few years ago. Preconsidered intro 1533, what I'm hoping everybody signs on to, uh, is co-primed by me and the public advocate, uh, Jumani Williams. And this uh, really points to the very dangerous industry uh, of the construction work and the tragic deaths of the three workers that, um, that we spoke about and we honored this morning or this earlier today underscores the extreme danger facing construction workers. Even despite the passage of local law 196, which mandates safety training for workers, the law's implementation has not met its original intent. To this day, many of the estimated almost 200,000 workers in the city still await this mandated training. And as the administration has failed to release funding to develop curriculum in a timely way, this is especially the case for day laborers who make up a significant portion of the construction workers and are amongst the most vulnerable workers. They're being told to go and um, get training Workers are, get, are being told by private contractors to go get training, um, and it is our responsibility to ensure that everyone has access. This bill will extend the deadline, and with a couple other pieces and, and policy changes, we're going to be able to unleash uh, a, a real robust opportunity for everyone to get educated. Uh, we are in a crisis, and extending the deadline is the one immediate step that we can take, and we'll be doing this at the next stated, so I hope that you can all join us. Uh, we want to pull a briefing together to ensure that everyone understands this very intricate and, 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 and nuanced situation, but I'm committed with the public advocate and the speaker to make this happen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Manchaka. And with no other members signed up to speak, we will now call on the speaker to close today's meeting. Today's state of meeting of April 18th, 2019 is hereby adjourned. Everyone have a happy Pesach and Easter. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader.